A couple of months ago, Elon promised it, and now there's an actual date set. August 19th of 2021 is Tesla AI Day. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So <laughs> as you might expect, I'm pretty darn happy this morning. Last night as I was sleeping, Elon Musk tweeted out that August 19th is going to be Tesla AI Day. So first of all, of course, as an AI researcher and a general AI enthusiast, this is huge news. I'm really excited to see what Tesla has to say about this and I'm hoping <laughs> maybe I'll get an invite to go to the event in person. As I'm sure you might expect, if they send me an invitation today, I will be buying a plane ticket tomorrow. But anyway, aside from just me, you know, personally, <laughs> why does this actually matter? Tesla AI Day is a huge event. Uh, in the past, they've had Autonomy Day, which was sort of AI Day, and they've also had Battery Day. Those were two major events. And of course, recently they had the Plaid Model S reveal, but that's a different sort of event. That's like, you know, current technology focused, whereas these other things like Battery Day are sort of, you know, future focused. And certainly I expect Tesla AI Day will be, you know, to some extent present day focused, but mostly future focused. They will talk about their plans for the next several years, I'm sure. So first of all, why is Tesla actually having this event? Elon Musk made it quite clear in another tweet that was like a reply to his original tweet that said the entire intent was to recruit the best AI talent in the world. So if you happen to think of yourself as the best AI talent in the world, you should probably try to get yourself an invite there. Or at the very least, you should watch the live stream and see if you're interested in Tesla, you know, working for Tesla and applying after you watch the live stream or before. So that's Tesla's very publicly stated intent for this event. So it's not really a media event. It's not really an event to tell the general public about all their cool stuff. Tesla really doesn't do that kind of thing for the most part. I mean, when you look at something like Battery Day, it was mostly focused on people who understood batteries and the technically savvy people. It was not a media event in the sense, I mean, you could call the Plaid Model S more of a media event, right? That was something that was like, wow, look at this cool tech and, you know, you can drive around and you can get slammed back into the seat and all of that good stuff. But this is more of something that's an in industry insider type of event. I guess that might be the way to put it. So Battery Day was an industry insider type of event. It was something for people who understood batteries and battery chemistry and battery manufacturing. They were like, holy mackerel. Whereas people in the general public who didn't care about that stuff very much was like, you know, whatever, this doesn't matter. It did matter. It matters a huge amount to the future plans of Tesla and it's gonna make a huge difference to the eventual semi-truck. Although I just read an article that said that the semi-truck is gonna be delayed till 2022, which is a bummer. But anyway, you know, it matters to the Cybertruck, it matters to the, I guess not the Plaid anymore, but certainly the Roadster and certainly the Semi, and eventually to the Model Y, et cetera, that will all sort of transition over to this 4680 battery cell format and probably different chemistries in that. But anyway, so all of that stuff is to say that that type of event, you know, it was very much of an industry insider type of event. So I expect Tesla AI Day to be very much of an industry insider event. And certainly if the main goal is to recruit people, they're not going to sort of water this down too much. In fact, I expect the event, the, you know, the announcements and what they talk about to go over the head of many, many people watching, which is totally fine, right? They're, they're not really trying to do a media type event where they dumb down all of this stuff. So I expect to gain a huge amount of information out of this event. And I I expect it to be amazing. And again, if I can go in person, part of it is just to go to the event. But another thing is I, you know, personally haven't been to an in-person conference since the summer of 2019. Yeah. So, you know, it's been two years because of the pandemic since I've been able to go out and actually hobnob with other AI researchers in person. So that part of the event which won't actually be part of the event, but just hanging out with people in the audience who are going to be, I expect, some very, very smart people there. That will be cool in its own right. So obviously all of this is a big deal, but for Tesla, I think there's some really, really good indicators here. Number one, it indicates that they have something that they think is worthy of showing to people who really understand this industry, right? So that means that they feel like they're in a situation where they're like, we have some cool stuff to show. Obviously full self-driving version nine beta, you know, whatever is, is super, super cool. But I think 
they probably would like to show people even more detail about that. So that will be a really, really cool thing and a super positive sign about Tesla and where they're heading and where they are right now. In addition, I and a bunch of other people I've seen on Twitter believe that a lot of information about Dojo is going to be revealed. If you don't know what Dojo is, you can watch some videos I've done on that in the past. But anyway, it's sort of the next supercomputer that Tesla is building and it's going to be huge and very, very important to their future. And in addition, we might get some information about Dojo as a service right? So we've got Amazon Web Services, which is a huge profit center for them, right? That's the they basically create virtual computers for anyone, including the business that I'm starting up, which is an AI business, by the way. But including that business, we're using AWS because as opposed to having to go out and build out your own hardware platform and everything, it is way, way, way cheaper to use AWS instead. And, you know, they keep it up to date and they can scale it to anything you want very easily. But of course, we pay for that privilege. And so therefore, they, they're making a huge amount of profit. So Tesla, in addition to doing their own training much, much more quickly, will be able to compete with AWS and Google services and other things in terms of AI specific type of training work. So, you know, they can license that out to other research institutions, but also other companies and everything. So the likelihood, and Elon Musk has even said this, is that eventually you'll be able to rent out space on Dojo as a service or DAS, I don't know, but DAAS. Anyway, you'll be able to rent out that space and you'll be able to create virtual machines for yourself that will be very, very scalable. Now, as Dojo hasn't really come about and maybe Maybe part of this announcement because originally if you remember this dojo was supposed to come online in the summer of 2021 and guess what it's the summer of 2021 so there is the possibility that they might make a big announcement and say that at least part of dojo is online right now so that would be absolutely huge news and it would be amazing if that happened but at the beginning, probably it's going to be limited to Tesla's use only because they need it so much for their full self-driving software and training, et cetera. And again, I've talked about this in a lot of other videos, but the upshot is that the faster this computer is and the more data throughput it has, the faster they can do training, which is, which is huge at this point. That's what they need to be able to do. But eventually they're gonna have enough headroom that they're going to be able to rent out some of this as a service to other people and they can make money off of that. So that's another really nice profit center, which you know probably won't, I don't know, <laughs> I was gonna say it probably won't ever exceed anything else, but Amazon Web Services has done quite well for itself and it makes an awful lot of money for Amazon. So you never know, this could actually become, you know, a multi-billion dollar industry for Tesla in the next few years. I don't expect that to happen immediately, but it could definitely happen by the middle of the decade or so. So anyway, the fact that Tesla thinks that they have enough to show to be exciting and to put on a presentation is a very good sign. The other good sign, I think, is just the fact that they're still so adamant about recruiting the best AI talent. I did another episode talking about how Tesla's success might actually sort of spell their doom in the sense that they could actually lose the best AI talent because they've, you know, once they solve full self-driving, they've kind of tackled a massive, massive task. And if it's only refining it and getting a little bit better, then there's not really much to be done anymore. And so the best AI talent might leave Tesla. But the fact that they're still recruiting this hard and they're having a whole event to recruit the very best talent in the world means that number one, they don't think the job is done by any means and not the interesting part either. But number two, and just as interestingly, they might have other AI projects that they're interested in working on that they need really good talent for. So what could those projects be? I mean, you know, just I'm just gonna throw out a few possibilities, but one could be generalized traffic control, right? So we're talking about individual cars in full self-driving right now, but another possibility is that what if we started looking at traffic as an entire organism, right? And people do this already, but using AI to communicate between cars and also to figure out the best traffic flow patterns and all of that kind of stuff, would make a huge difference to people's lives in terms of how they commute and how they transport themselves back and forth. So that is a pretty gigantic task they could work on. Of course, they could also get into medicine, things like protein folding and working on new vaccines, et cetera. And I know Tesla has dabbled in that. That's kind of outside their core competency, but it is something they could do, you know, in medical science or, you know, do something along with Neuralink about brain science, cognitive science. So those are possibilities. Certainly solving energy problems in terms of especially intermittent power like solar and wind and battery storage and figuring out the best way to recreate the grid as a more distributed grid, not only in the United States, but all around the world. That's another huge problem and AI can actually be very, very helpful in that too. So anyway, those are just a few off the top of my head type of ideas and I'm sure they have other better ones too. But anyway, this is all incredibly huge news and the fact that they're still recruiting or still want to recruit talent so, so hard is 
excellent, excellent news in my mind. That's probably the best news coming out of AI day is that Tesla is still in startup mode. They're still growing. They still need the best talent. They're still looking for those people and they still think they have enough projects and enough really interesting work to do to continue hiring and to hold on to the best people that they have. So this is great, great news. I'm super happy for Tesla and I'm super happy for us customers of Tesla and us Tesla shareholders. I think this is all incredibly positive news. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and informative. I'm super excited if you can't tell. <laughs> it's early in the morning, but I'm still super excited. So anyway, if you do enjoy the episode, definitely like it so other people can find it and also consider subscribing for more of this stuff. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc., etc. Check it out in the description. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. You're, you're wonderful. I really appreciate all of the support this summer, and it's been a really interesting summer, and I'm sure it'll be an interesting fall and winter too. And of course, if you're interested in joining the team, definitely check out the link in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a new Tesla or a solar roof or a power wall or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>